Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Drum History News. Today we have a really cool one. Uh, this is all about a drum show, which is it the earliest? Is it the first drum show? I think that is a big possibility. I don't know. We'll maybe um, see if anyone has any other examples uh, that they can post in the comments of earlier drum shows. But this is cool. It's got Leedy in it. It's got uh, George Way in it. And um, like I said, it's all about possibly the earliest drum show. So this is from the Los Angeles Times in 1925, and it reads, Something new, a drum show. In the band and instrument department of the Burkle Music Company, maybe Burkell, not sure, third floor, an unusual exhibition of the latest leady drums and traps is to be a feature of this gala week in Los Angeles. Mr. George W.A., Mr. Charles Siebert, representatives of Leedy Drum Manufacturing Company, who were both professional drummers of national fame and who are attending the Shrine Convention in Los Angeles, have consented to devote a certain amount of their time to special demonstrations of the wonderful Leedy Drums and Traps at the Burkle Music Company, every day from 9 to noon in the morning and from 1 to 4 o'clock in the afternoons. And then we have the latest Leedy Floating Head Snare Drum will be one of the extraordinary features of these drum shows, in all caps. It is something that will be of intense interest to all drummers, for it incorporates a most advanced improvement in snare drums, hitherto unknown. Then we have the new vibraphone, which has been creating a sensation in all radio broadcasting stations in the East, will be on exhibition at the Burkle Music Company. Come and marvel at the clever exhibitions of our nobles' guests and the instruments which they use. Then we have the Burkle Company, the Steinway House. Really cool ad. It's, it's interesting in the end how it says, come and marvel at the clever exhibitions of our noble's guests. It's just like, I don't know, grammatically that sounds weird. And I also like how it says, with well, the hours are nine to noon and then one to four o'clock. It's like, because these guys have to take a lunch break, obviously, but you don't really see that now. Someone would usually be covering it. Uh, so I guess George Way and Charles Siebert were like the guys working here. It sounds like it's a little different from a modern drum show where it would be uh, the Burkle or Burkell company is kind of sponsoring to bring in George Way and Charles Siebert to represent leady and show people what they have going on so it's kind of like a single vendor drum show um which clearly had to be a uh, influence for future generations to have more drum shows and more trade shows about drums because it seems like the way they write this it's like an anomaly like this crazy drum show you know <laughs> like come and see this it's never been done before um, so really interesting. Like I said before, this is a very early example of a drum show. Are there earlier ones? Um, possibly. I mean, we're, this is 1925, so it's pretty early in the drum set, but, um, there's always been trade shows and things like that. So if you know of an earlier one, comment below, but, uh, 1925 is certainly very early. Um, so Thank you to Jerry Ryman, per usual, for um, providing me with this article from his great Percussion in the News binder that he sent over. Thanks for watching this. Stay tuned for more in the upcoming weeks. Um, I'm going to do a more visual one next week that has uh, more pictures of drum sets in uh, newspaper articles where they were for kids and have a bunch of different cool drum heads and all that stuff. So that'll be coming up uh, either next week or the week after. But um, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.